Hi everyone, and welcome back to the broadcast. Well, in today's report, I've got so much to share with you specifically regarding shortages right here in the United States of America and quite frankly, all over the globe. You see, the mainstream media is being silent again about all of this, just like they were in 2008 when they told you nothing about the economy and waited until, well, after the shit hit the fan to tell you what was truly going on. Well, channels like mine and right here on Restricted Republic and Lisa Haven, we're going to tell you all the information and then allow you to decide what to do with it. And by the way, if you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you are subbed, especially if you are new, click that all button. But with that, the shortages that I'm particularly talking about right now that are striking America are shortages on our medical supplies, shortages that you're absolutely going to want to know about, especially if you have yourself or a loved one or a friend who relies on those medicines. Not just that, but there's also sporadic shortages in our food supply as well that I believe you should be aware of. But before I do, here's a quick break from my sponsor. Well, according to media outlets, a cyber attack occurs every 39 seconds. Most of those attacks are on financial institutions like banks because cyber criminals have realized that is where the most valuable data is. If you are not taking extra steps to protect yourself and your finances, then you are putting your investments, your money, and your security all at risk. That's why I highly recommend Virtual Shield One at hidewithlisa.com. You see, Virtual Shield One puts your security into your hands. Not only that, but it also has advanced identity protection suit that includes Virtual Shield's military grade VPN. On top of it all, they have a strict no-log policy, $1 million in insurance, social security protection, and dark web monitoring and more. Now, these advanced services will notify you in real time if your personal or financial information is associated with any kind of data breach. It's also going to help you to protect yourself uh, against cyber criminals who like to steal your financial information. Now, Virtual Shield also offers delete me capabilities and what that basically does uh, is it locates and helps hide all of your information from search results and people who might be searching on websites. Check it out today by going to hidewithlisa.com. That's hidewithlisa.com. This is just the regular VPN that you see on the screen, but if you scroll down, you can see the VPN uh, Virtual Shield 1. The good news is, is right now they are offering a 60-day free trial on this thing. All you have to do is click Get 3 60 protection and this will pop up. Just fill out this information and you can see there is a 50% discount, but make sure you go to hidewithlisa.com to take advantage of that discount. So make sure that you guys are protected. Get that VPN today. You want more information? Click the more button or click in the description box below. All right, back to the broadcast. So before I dive into this report, I just want to make a statement about a video that I put out yesterday, and it's this one right here by my head, the biggest cyber attack in history now underway. Now in that video, I stated that hackers, three separate hack groups came out and they are threatening to ignite a a, a hack attack on the European banking system within 48 hours, which was put us at, I believe, sometime today. That's the threat that they made. This is not something that I said was going to happen. I said, this is a threat that they have made. The mainstream media, on the other hand, is silent about all kinds of stuff like that. Well, shortly after the making of that video, hack attacks did happen right here in the United States of America, which I warned could happen as well. Take a look here. This is on the Gateway Pundit. Senior government officials rushed to limit impact, a potentially largest cyber theft and extortion event in recent years history. So unfortunately, that is one of the bigger attacks that we have had here in the U.S. Now, they're blaming Russia hacktivists. Uh, I'm really doubtful on if they're Russian or not. I'll leave that on the table for you to decide because there's a lot of disinformation out there when it comes to that. Now, with that, let's dive into the shortages that are happening right now uh, that could affect you and your household and maybe already have. Take a look at this first article here, and this is on NPR. Uh, 
Pfizer warns of looming penicillin supply shortage. It goes on. Pre-filled bacillin LA pediatric syringes are expected to begin running low by the end of June, while all bacillin CR syringes could begin diminishing in the third quarter of this year. Inventory is predicted to start recovering in the second and third quarters of 2024, Pfizer said. So according to them, there's hope, but not till the end of the year. Penicillin is an antibiotic used to treat various types of infections, including STDs, such as syphilis and pneumonia. And by the way, this comes on the heels of a syphilis uptick. Uh, not something we necessarily want, but uh, the medicine uh, is in short supply. Something to be aware of, not only penicillin, but check this out. This is on bbc.com and, and, and there's other reports on it. But it's headlined, U.S. doctors forced to ration as cancer drug shortages hit nationwide. Now it goes on, experts say that the United States is currently suffering one of the most severe shortages of chemotherapy drugs it has seen for three decades. Now, Ms. Desmoitz, who is somebody who unfortunately has cancer uh, that they talk about in this report, but she is one of many as 100,000 patients who may have been affected over the past several months, according to Dr. Julie Garlow, the chief medical officer at the American Society of Clinical Oncology. As of this week, the United States States FDA said over 130 drugs were in short supply, 14 of those being cancer treatments. Uh, now, this includes, you know, as far as um, some of these medic me medications uh, that are on short supply, stuff for, and, and this is just through reading on these articles, uh, stuff like blood pressure medication, Alzheimer's medication, Parkinson's medication, depression medication, and epilepsy medication are all on that list. Now, here's another article talking about the short supply of these products, drug shortages near all-time high, leading to rationing. And this is on the New York Times, not necessarily my favorite there, uh, but it goes on to state this, that hospitals are scouring shelves for supplies of a drug that reverses lead poisoning and for a sterile fluid needed to stop the heart from bypass surgery. So that's other things that are in short supply. Some antibiotics are still scarce following the winter flu season when doctors and patients frantically chase medication for ailments like strep throat. Even children's Tylenol was hard to find. Hundreds of drugs are now on the list of medications in short, short supply in the United States. So there we have it. There are things that I think we should be aware of. This is definitely one of those things, especially if you have someone who is suffering any one of those things mentioned in those articles. And considering there is about 130 on short supply, these are things that I believe we as American citizens should absolutely be aware of. Uh, not only that, but something else to really consider is the fact that if we go to war with China, you can guarantee that we are going to have massive shortages on all of our medications because a huge chunk of that comes out of China, right? Take a look, WashingtonTimes.com. Uh, Wake up call, Chinese control of United States pharmaceutical supplies sparks a growing concern, and this should be a growing concern, right? And there's lots of articles on this, by the way. Uh, this is a little older article, but I think the point still therein lies. And here's what it says here. China, the newsletter reported on Tuesday that it accounted for 95% of U.S. imports of ibuprofen, 91% of U.S. imports of hydrocortisone, 70% of U.S. imports of acetaminophen, 40% to 45% of U.S. imports of penicillin, and 40% of U.S. imports of heparin, according to the Commerce Department data. In all, about 80% of the U.S. supply of antibiotics are made in China. This is one of the reasons that we cannot afford to go to war with China. We rely on so much from China. And it's a very sad fact. Donald Trump, when he was in office, uh, tried to get a handle on this. And of course, the Biden administration wiped all that out. Uh, but one of the things we need to start doing here in the U.S. is start making antibiotics here. And one of the chilling things, um, and don't quote me on this, 
because I'm going off of my memory, I believe it was 2004, uh, we stopped making penicillin here in the US and now we've got all these shortages. Why aren't we doing things like that here in the United States of America? Do they purposefully want our destruction? Do they not want us around? Why are we relying so much on China when we can do things right at home here in the United States of, uh, United States of America. And that's questions that we need to, to get our congressional leaders on, especially in light of war with China that could really embolden and spark a, 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 an epidemic or, or a massive shortage on all our medical supplies. Just something to think about there as well. And just a heads up for you, not saying that's going to happen because I don't know if we're going to go to war with China. All I know is crap is kind of hitting the fan between China, Taiwan. And if they get involved, well, the United States has already said, at least Joe Biden has, that we are going to, well, stick our head in the matter and that could ignite Russia. Cue World War III. It's a real case. It's a real scenario. I pray that it doesn't happen. That said, there's also other things food-wise that you should be aware of. Take a look here. CNBC chocolate is said to get more expensive as cocoa prices soar to seven-year high. Now, I love the hell out of chocolate. Uh, so, uh, I mean, there, there's good and bad on that one, I guess, because it um, makes me eat less chocolate. But the bad news is it shouldn't be spiking that high. Not only chocolate, how about your sugar as well? A business insider sugar prices spike to decade high on rising worries of global shortage sparked, you know, with that sugar. Here we have drought concerns also grow as 50% of corn, 51% of soybean in the U.S. now considered to be in drought. And then we also have long lines and shortages hitting uh, some of our, well, local food banks. Here we have WALB.com, biggest food shortage in 40 years, local food bank in desperate need of donations, and that's there out of Georgia. Now, we also know that the war between Russia and Ukraine has sparked some grain shortages as well, uh, but I guess they're they're working on that. But um, either way, I think these are things you need to be aware of uh, and, and, you know, prepare. Anyhow, I love all of you. Thanks again for tuning in. I'm Lisa Haven, signing out.